to another episode of JC's Cake. My name is Emily. I'm so glad you're here. If you have not already, make sure to follow my Instagram, that's Butter and Potter, and my TikTok, Pacey and Joey. And lastly, if you have not already, make sure to check out that YouTube channel so that way you can also have another platform to subscribe to and comment while you listen. Now that that's out of the way, if you're new here, hi. If you don't know what this episode or this podcast is about, I'll tell you. It's where we go individually, episode by episode, throughout Pacey and Joey's scenes, or just individually, to cover what they're like. So that way, throughout the season or the show, we can figure out why they do the things that they do. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we are on episode 15, Crime and Punishment. And this came out, we believe, on February 9th, 2000. So, the first scene that we have is scene one of Pacey and Joey. So, Joey's in the school hallway. She's painting her mural um, on the wall during after school hours. And Pacey comes up to see her painting. And Joey says, I don't recall requesting the pleasure of your company, Pacey. And Pacey says, Rack? And Joey says, Brush. And Pacey says, You know, after the Van Gogh chopped off his own ear, there was a rash of the copycat multiples among his students. And Joey says, Your point being? And Pacey says, Well, my point being that the whole world revolves at artists and these their own talent and wants to be just like them. I'm hoping some some genius will run off on me. Which is kind of funny because I like how he adds like the, like he cut off his own ear, Van Gogh. And secondly, I listened to like a whole podcast episode they saw with him um, on Thick and Thin. That's the podcast thing. And it, it was very intense. I will say that. And... Then, lastly, I want to point out that I like how Pacey, uh, throughout this episode, this is no spoiler alert, because we're going to see this in this episode. Throughout this episode, we're going to see Dawson not being able to see the mural, but Pacey is, so that will come back later. So Joey says, you got kicked out of your house again, which, again, like, she knows that he's getting kicked out of his house. And Pacey says, well, not exactly kicked out. It was more like they're filming a lifetime ordinary movie in my living room right now. And Joey says, And which of the Witter sisters in complete distress right now? And Pacey said, That would be n- number uno, number one. <laughs> Left the semen manager for the contract un- unbecoming, fleed back to a whole home front, and brought back along with my, sc- my screaming nieces. Which, I like how Joey knows about every situation, like, that, like, it's in his family. Like, obviously, they go, like, deep in. Like, I think when I was talking about this last episode, where I was, like, it's obvious that Pacey and Joey, like, talk about those things that they, like, um, like, that they go through. And whether that was, like, at the beginning of their relationship or, like, in the middle of their relationship, it's pretty obvious that either they know each other like for a long time and that's why or he is like going through some things and Joey knows about it so Joey says so I finally get my own room and you flee back to the sofa cow city ouch and Daisy says my sin my sin exactly and Joey says so uh what do you think and she's like backing up and Pacey asks oh is it done <laughs> like and Joey says, yes, it's done. And Pacey says, I thought that the prin- principal Green has a clownish you guys to do a mural. It's certainly school spirit and unity. And Joey says, they did. And Pacey says, well, no well, no offense, but this looks like something you found tapped to on King Con- King Forehead. And Joey says, you don't like it. And Pacey says, I didn't say I didn't like it. I'm... I'm pretty sure the rest of the murals will look a little more traditional, but... And Joey says, what about, what, like, football players and lighthouses? And what do they say about high school experience? And Pacey says, Joe, this is the U.S. of A. 
the U.S. of A. And it always makes me crack up. And he says, We're a little prentice nation, and we have art in public places. We we want to be uh, used about as so much as Godzilla. And Joey says, yeah, but Pacey, don't you think that the art have this point power? I mean, it can... It could bring people together. And Pacey says, oh yeah, absolutely. And museums, the thinking of man's pickup joints. And Joey says, that's what I like about you, Pacey. You just go so deep. <laughs> the way she says it. And then Pacey says, thanks. And Joey looks at the mural and Pacey smiles. <laughs> it's just so funny. He goes, thanks. That's what I like about you, Pacey. You just go so deep. <laughs> and so, I think he smiles because, like she says, like, and he's like, ooh, heck yes. So then we see the next scene, which is scene two of Joey. And they're in the school hallway by Joey's mural, and the mural is covered up by a sheet that is taped on the wall to prevent anyone from seeing it. And Dawson comes up and tries to peek at it, and Joey sees him trying, and she says, no peeking. And Dawson says, what? I don't get a preview? And Joey says, no. And he s Dawson says, why not? Pacey did. Which is funny, because I like how Pacey got to see the work, but jo like, Joey didn't allow Dawson. And I think one of the reasons why is I feel like da Pacey's more supportive in Joey's art than Dawson ever was or is so she doesn't want him to like kind of ruin everything that she's had going on because I think in her head she knows that Dawson's just gonna come in and be like oh what is that like I feel like that's just gonna be his reaction and that's what she's scared of so Joey says Dawson the ever the ever ending is a part to any work and I want to have the whole experience. He didn't tell you. <laughs> she goes, he didn't tell you what it was, right? And and Dawson says, no, he didn't. But he said it was great. And Joey says, that means a lot. Coming from the world's distributed art credit. And Dawson says, he, well, he knows what he likes. And... I do like that. Like, he knows what he likes. Like, yeah, he likes Joey Dawson, but obviously you. Let's quote him on that later. <laughs> and Joey says, um, Pacey's prized possession is a black, it's a black violet painting of the baby Elvis. <laughs> That's funny. And Dawson says, so how's his, how's your speech coming? And Joey says, I don't know why I have to say anything. I mean, isn't it an artist just supposed to let her work speak for herself? And Dawson says, yeah, but the PTA and the school board let you paint something in the hallway of a public school. They expect a little bit of a ceremony in return. And Joey says, so are you going to be there? And Dawson says, of course. I mean, if you want me to. And Joey says, I want you to. Okay, and whether you think, be honest, even if you hate it, um, Dawson says, even if I hate it, what makes you think I'm going to hate it? it? And Joey says, it's just, and Dawson says, the stepping out from the behind the curtain, I can understand it can be terrifying. Open the lights in front of all those people being judged. And Joey says, well, it's even more than that. I mean, I feel like de declaring myself for the first time. I mean, what I really think about is places, and with everyone staring, it's going to be like they're looking right into my soul, which I kind of like. So what she means by that, I think, in my opinion, I think she means like when everyone stares at her painting, it's like all her emotions are built up in this painting, and she's going through so much, like, as it is, and so it's just kind of like building up over and over again. So that's kind of what she means. And another thing, I think, what Dawson, Dawson's like, how can I hate this thing? And da -de -da -de -da. But, like, Dawson was so unsupportive of her artwork in season two. So what makes Joey think in season three that he's going to be even more supportive? So then we have the next scene, which is scene one of Pacey. 
and he is outside of Doug's apartment and Pacey has just buzzed in and he goes to Doug's door but when Doug sees that Pacey, try Pacey is Pacey he like shuts the door before Pacey could get in but Pacey managed to put in his foot in the door which I find pretty funny and Doug says no 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 Pacey last time you were here you left water rings on my dinner coffee table and Pacey says Dougie mom and dad just want me to bring you something that's all and Doug says oh yeah and Pacey says he goes what and Pacey makes his way through the house and he goes me <laughs> Doug says, what are you doing? And Pacey says, I'm moving in, bro. And Doug says, what? Excuse me? He's like, this is the worst thing that could possibly happen to me. And Pacey says, you heard me. I'm moving in. Oh, look. Dad gave me a check to give to you, like a security project, in case I break your stereo. Which <laughs> I'm like, the fact that, like, his parents just kicked him out and made him move to Doug's house. Like, poor Doug, first of all, but not really at the same time. But, like, at the same time, like, they don't trust Pacey enough to, like, not break his stereo. And that's kind of funny. And Doug says, you're not breaking my stereo because you're not touching my stereo. Because you're not moving in with me. Not now, not ever. This is, this is not a party of five. And Pacey says, come on, Dougie, please. You can't make me go back to that house. I mean, think about it. You got this whole styling battery pad on yourself with all the nice lighting and fancy windows fancy window dressers and all of the 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 trapping of the dire experience closet sexuality man and I want to have room for myself too anymore so the thing that kind of gets me is obviously there was some abuse going on in Pacey Splitter's life with his dad and it was kind of obvious whether he was just being a smart ass or whatever like I generally think that there was something like going on with him and his dad because we saw it last episode or last season where his dad hit him and he goes don't ever touch me again ever and I don't think that was the first time like I generally don't think that was the first time that he got hit and it makes me think about it now like did Doug not know about this like at all like there had to be some type of abuse going on because the fact that like Pacey was so like like he was he wasn't really surprised when his dad hit him. Like, that was the thing that got me. Like, his dad was like, oh, you're coming home with me. And he got, like, punched in the, like, face. But at the same time, like, I, I don't think, like, there was initial shock in his face. So now when we go to Doug, and he's, in, like, Pacey gets kicked out of his house. And Doug, like, is like, you're not moving in with me. Is it because of his older sister or is it because of you know everything that's going on and I he says he don't he doesn't have room for himself anymore probably because he's like Joey even knows that he's sleeping on the couch but like at the same time like I don't think that was really it like I think that there was some abuse going on and especially with like all the drama that was going on like I feel like Pacey just didn't want to be there anymore and he probably fought for himself and his dad just kicked him out so Doug asks since when and Pacey says well since Carrie decided to take her extended leave of her absent from Jerry you know remember Jerry don't you our favorite brother-in-law the one with all the tattoos and of course she brought him along with the no neck monsters who are currently residing in my room. And Pacey said, um, he goes, so what do you say, man? Can I stay here, please? And my dog says, if you agree to this, and it is the very big if, there will be rules. And Pacey says, I'm willing to, I'm willing your pupil. And then Doug says, number one, we do not eat anything that mom sends over. The woman thinks that the iceberg lettuce in a curse. And Pacey says, agreed. And <laughs> number two, the coaster. Live it, glove it, use it all the time. And Pacey says, done. 
And Doug says, you will keep the CD collection in alphabetic order by the last name, not first. Do you understand? And Pacey says, oh yeah, perfectly. <laughs> I love how, like, Pacey just looks very excited. And he says, but I don't see foresee the need to dive into your diva collection anytime, too. And Doug says, oh, and I think it would be surprised about how Torch and Prince female woman can soak into your brookie. Breaky heart. And Pacey says, Heart's just fine, thank you very much. And Doug says, Oh, sure, little brother. Sure, it is. So at one point, I just want to say that Pacey, like, found, like, you know, like those, um, I forgot what they're called. I've used these in a while. Like, where you put the bead up to, like, your hand or something, you put them on, like, when you're kids, and it, like, goes through, and it's just all spiky. And if you know, you, I, if you watched the episode, you probably know what I'm talking about. And Pacey, like, puts it up to his mouth, and, like, we see him, like, like, put it up to his mouth where his, it's, like, covering his whole mouth, and it's just so funny to me, so I had to point that out. I have no idea what it's actually called, though. And so that says, um, okay, and then Pace, Dougie, or Pacey says, clip Dougie, if you're referring to our brief jailhouse conversation the other night, you chalked it all up to a drunken rambling. And Doug says, well, there... There won't be any of that on my watch, and if you're, mo I mean, if you're any mopping around the love sick puppy either. By the way, you get any discrimes? And Pacey says, "Oh God, help me!" <laughs> so, like, for a while, we see like Doug and Pacey hate each other, like absolutely hate each other. But now, like in season three, I think. I think it's kind of because Pacey's getting older. Like, we see Doug step into, like, this older brother role. And I think it's generally because Pacey is getting older. And he, like, Doug, I think, knows what it's like. And throughout season one, we kind of see it, too. Like, Doug has to, like, step into a police role instead of a brotherly role. And then season... Or, I mean, season one. And season two, we don't... I don't think we even see Doug that much, to be completely honest. And then season three, like, now we kind of see him step into, like, the brother role that we know that Pacey really needed. So then we go to season, like, scene two of Joey. And so Joey is at her house, and Joey, Bessie, and Bodie, because Bodie came back the last episode, are getting ready to see her un unviewing thing. And Joey says, you're not planning on taking pictures. And Bodie says, uh, don't try and stop her, Joey. When a little sister accomplishment something imp impressive, it's going to be important for the big sister to create a huge embarrassing fuss over her. And Bessie says, yeah, more embarrassing the better. And Joey says, thank you. I mean, I know it's gonna, it's not going to be too much fun for walking in the hallways of Cape Side again, seeing it was... Your, wasn't exactly your favorite place on earth and Bessie says yeah but I'm old remember and that was a long time ago and things are different now and Bodie says they're not that different what are they like 10 black kids in that school and Joey says 11 don't try to rewrite history Bess I mean I remember days when you used to pick me up from kindergarten and you used to spend the whole time home with a week about some two-faced idiot who thought they were better than you because you had the wrong kind of genes. Which I feel like is such a teenage thing. Like, like that is such a teenager thing to do. And plus he says, okay, I admit it, I hated high school, but I am so glad it's not like that for you, Joey. You are talented and everyone at that school knows it. They're going to know about it. They know it for years, and today they're going to know to see the positive that Joey Potter is forced to read with it. So one thing I really do love about this scene is what I was talking about earlier was how Doug was being a good older brother for Pacey that Pacey needed. And over here we see Joey get the older sister vibe that she needed. But I feel like it's kind of like a motherly vibe too. And... Also, when you kind of think about it, like, I feel like both of these siblings for Pacey and Joey, I feel like they're, they have to step in because their parents aren't there to be able to step in. 
And that is one of the things I really do love about Dawson's Creek. It doesn't like show the whole parenty thing besides Gail and Mitch. And we kind of see like there are sides where most teenage shows like they don't even have the parents in the picture whatsoever. But here like it's kind of like we see the role of someone else. And yeah we know the parents are there but it's kind of like the parents are all messed up. And so then we have the next scene which is scene two of <laughs> Pacey and Joey. So the school hallway there's a whole group of students watching and unveiling the mirrors and speeches and artists and Pacey, Dawson, Andy and Jack are watching and Bessie and Bodie are there too. So one of the artists is talking about their meal and the artist says, I painted this so we can remember the beings of knowledge that our teacher shined on us every day. In closing, I would like to thank Principal Green and all of the opportunities unpacked in the unity. And Principal Green says, and now our last Cape Style meal, I like to step in Joey could grace us about her creation. And Joey says, well, uh, Principal Green said the mural should be focused on the unions as a school, and you think about it, nothing really unifies us. Even our mascot is diverse, the Miname. Right there, you have a list of the student population. The only thing that I really unifies us, that I think could unify all of us, and we have in common, is the thinking that we could start to be something. I mean, by the time we get here, Though we somehow lost that feeling. We started to believe whatever our parents or our friends have told us about what we achieve, about what we got out of life. And we've forgotten about the possibility we had when we were younger. And that thought we all have in common. That's what symbolized my painting, Possibility. I painted it because I thought we could all have the daily reminder if you believe in yourself when you, when, when odds seem stack impossible. So I hope you like it. And before I say what happens, I do like Joey's speech. I like how it was based off of something that really like meant something to her. And obviously she had to explain it because they wanted a mini speech, but at the same time like you can see like everything that Joey has gone through in the past year is like based off this painting. Which I personally really like. So then she pulls the curtains down. And you know what? You know what happens? Someone completely destroys that painting. Yeah, completely destroys it. Like, with painting over it. And Joey sees it. And Pacey sees it. And Joey just runs out. And Pace, like Pacey run, or Dawson runs after her. And later Pacey runs after her too. And Dawson says, hey, wait up, you okay? And Joey says, that's what I get for calling into public school. And that's what I get for public service, public humiliation. And Dawson says, no one's humiliating except for the person that. And Joey says, about humiliating. And Dawson says to me, or she says, Dawson to me. And Dawson says, look, it was just a silly little prank. And Joey says, you don't know that. And Dawson says, you put your heart and soul into it, and I don't blame you for being angry. But don't turn this into something, some personal attack. And by the way, Pacey's there. And Pacey says, not to stick my nose in here, but just to stick my nose in. Of course it was a personal attack. And Dawson says, what? And Pacey says, there are only three murals in the hallway. Yours was the only one to get touched. And Dawson says, so? And Pacey says, so either someone didn't like what you were trying to say or someone didn't like you which, which i don't uh oh sorry my voice which i don't think like pacey was wrong by this at all like i think generally when you think about it like he wasn't wrong because excuse me one second. pacey was wrong by this in any type of way because when you think about it like Someone did come to attack Joey. Like, she was the only mural that was not there. And Dawson, in his head, was like, who would want to attack Joey? But at the same time, like, you have to think about it, like, realistically. Like, it wasn't like Joey was 
perfect in any type of way and the way that she like automatically comes in and tries to make this mural like some type of like diversity and all this different kind of stuff like obviously there's going to be some pointers where people are not going to like what she's saying and that's what Pacey's saying and so Dawson is like so blind to see that and Dawson's trying to think on the positive side but like how Dawson reacts to this like how like Pacey says Dawson, we're in high school. It's a very society unto own with a breaking order that cases system will be forgiving. Who knows the subline you have crossed of what defense you may have given without even knowing it. And it's true because he, Joey doesn't know what everyone else is thinking about her painting. And obviously someone could have peeked. I, I kind of don't get it because if it was covered, who would know? But also at the same time, like... Someone was either going after her or going after her painting, and Pacey knows that. But Dawson's response to this was parano paranoid much, and Pacey says, You don't think there's a possibility that there's someone out there who hates Joey for just being Joey? Who hates the way she talks or the way she dresses, the way she chews on her lower lip? <laughs> and Joey says, I don't chew on my lower lip. <laughs> And Pacey says, I'm just putting it out there. Think about it. Does anyone, does that come to mind? Which, I love how, I love how, like, Pacey, like, noticed that little thing. Like, it was kind of like in season three, episode one, where he, like, talks about how her big brown eyes and the way she flips her hair when she's nervous. And we see the lower lip, too, which she does bite on her lower lip. I think she was biting her lower lip right there. And Dawson says, why are we so ganged up on him and calm and call him dirty names. Do me a favor, just just stay out of it. It was like an act of pure venomism and pure and simple. Some idiot trying to rage against the machine. That doesn't make sense. And Joe says perfect. Heck a junko. This is exactly what a girl needs in the middle of its dream crisis and not it's not helping. So thanks, but no thanks. And she leaves them and they <laughs> watch her. And Pacey says, shouldn't we uh and Dawson says, no, let her go. I wonder if what would happen if, like, Pacey just went after her without even asking Dawson. Like, that would have been kind of a cool scene to see. But then we have the next scene, which is scene three of, of Joey. And this scene goes to Joey's house, and Dawson has come in into the house and sees Joey cleaning up the table and brings the surface bow. And so Dawson says, any room at the end? And Joey says, depends. And Dawson says, on what? And Joey says, the link of the lecture I'm going to be sit through. And Dawson says, no lecture, I promise. Although I do want to say that I'm sorry for what happened today. And I, I don't know. Like, I feel like the lecture was kind of needed for Pacey's sense because it was kind of like snapping Joey into what was actually happening. And I feel like Pacey needed to say this, but at the same time, like, yeah, so Dawson says, no lecture, I promise, although I just want to say that I'm sorry for what happened today, and Joey says, well, the whole thing was tragically lame to begin with, as if a painting on a wall is going to make a change in the slightest difference in the school, and Dawson says, maybe, maybe not, and Joey says, for some reason, I don't like the sound of maybes, and Dawson says, repaint the mural. And Joey says, what? And Dawson says, do it tonight. Surprise that bastard uh, when he shows up tomorrow morning. Which, okay. <laughs> when you have an inspiration with painting, I don't know why this always makes me mad. Like, this scene kind of makes me upset because he can't, she can't just repaint the mural. Like, she put her heart and her soul and her time and her energy into this mural. And he thinks it's just easy, like, reshooting. It's like telling him when someone doesn't like your movie, just reshoot the whole thing. Like, what's the big deal? Reshoot the whole thing. And when you have something in mind, like, you really like it, like, you're not going to just repaint the whole thing after being destroyed. Um, so Joey says, I rather shove hot, red hot needles among my toenails, okay? And Dawson says, come on, you're going to let some stupid high school prank keep you from it 
finishing something that you obviously care about? And Joey says, I finished it, Dawson, okay? It's not my fault that everyone got the chance to see it. And Dawson says, I can't believe you're being like this. And Joey says, like what? And Dawson says, defensive, dejected, dem demolished. And Joey says, newsflash, Dawson. I can't always be your punky little Joey. Joey Potter. I don't think this this ultimate preference of goodwill and good faith and humanity and sometimes I'm going to get a little bit depressed. It's not about inquiry, it's about being a victim. It took me a month to do that, Dawson. I had to convince it and, and, and share it and you, you can't just expect me to start over. And Dawson says, why not? And Joey says, for some reason, you haven't showed shoot a film since January. And Dawson says, Joey, that's completely different. Joey says, really? And Dawson says, yes, I quit filmmaking. That was a personal decision. And Joey says, it's nothing to do with the fact that you poorly received at, you're poorly received at festival. And Dawson says, truthfully, no. And Joey says, well, then how could they not have viewed for you? And Dawson says, what do you mean? And Joey says, you have all these choices, Dawson. You have these choices that you can take for granted. I mean, God. One day you're a filmmaker and the next you're not, and tomorrow you could wake up and decide you're a sculpture for, or just go to the backyard to hear it, or climb out Everest, and you can do that. And Dawson says, you can't? And Joey says, no, I can't. Dawson asks, why not? And Joey says, I can't afford to waste my time to find myself and be artistic, because I can't afford to reject reality and go off and chase my pipe chains. I can't do that, because that's not my life, that's yours. And Dawson says, you know what I think this is about? And Joey asks, what? And Dawson says, I think you reveal. I think you reveal, re relief, sorry, relief, because someone painted over your mural, because you never got the hard part, never showed it to the world, never got what anyone thought about it. You never decide for yourself how good and talented you really are. Wonder why I come over tonight? These are the keys to the school. Principal gave Green gave them to me. Do you want them? Oh my goodness, Dawson, Dawson, Dawson. Okay, I have a lot to say about this thing. Number one, Dawson just makes it so easy for Joey to just repaint the mural and act like it didn't take her a month to do. Like, he specifically ignored her and what she was trying to say. Like, she was trying to say, hey, I can't just repaint this because it's not easy for me. Like, it may be easy for you and to get all, like, film festival and, like, you have that thing and you haven't filmed since January. And now you're giving me advice. You're telling me, oh, just repaint it. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, he, and then he goes on to say, girl, leave. Like, no, no, she's not. Like, that's not what she is. Like, she specifically says... Like, allow me to be depressed. Allow me to mourn that moment. Because it took me a month. It took all my energy and my thoughts and my feelings. Like, that's the whole purpose of painting. Like, that, it, literally, it is the whole purpose of painting. I have a couple of paintings in my, or did have a couple of paintings in my room. If you recall that I have said a couple of times that I'm moving. And in the process of moving and recording, it's been a little bit hard. I've been trying to like record all these episodes before I move so that way I don't have to worry about it later. But I basically am taking my paintings down and I look at these paintings and I have so many memories and so much meaning in these paintings. One, one of them I saw like it had like it was supposed to have a moon on it but I'm not good at it and so it was a moon and it had like a sad race or whatever on it and it was like red or blue and basically that meant like anger and sadness and everything that was going on in the world but there's always like something to bring up the lightness in it and so when I looked at that painting it's been like five years maybe there was so much things that like so much memories like I was in the back porch of my grandparents house I was painting and it just meant so much to me now than I think it would ever mean to me mm -hmm. then 
And so when I look at it, and I remember the first time I looked at that painting, it was like this painting of so many things, like so much reality and so much non-pressure. And it was the time where I figured out my mom was drinking again. And there was so much emotions into that painting. And then I had another painting that says Jesus is alive because I'm a Christian. And in that painting, my little cousin who was four at the time was painting with me because he saw me painting and he was like, what are you doing? Can I help? And he helped me. And it's one of my favorite paintings that I have and I know I want to hand that up in the next house and probably for the rest of my life because Again, like, that was another thing that I was going through. I was going through, like, so much pain and so much pressure and so much, like, disappointment in the world that that painting and that emotions was in that painting. And so, that's what I mean with Joey. Like, she can't just repaint it because my five, five-year-old paintings, like, five years paintings, birth of it, they can never be replaced. And they can never be what they once were if they got destroyed because the memories of those paintings the emotions of those paintings are never going to re be replaced and that's what Joey means like she can't just repaint the mural because she works so hard she worked since she worked a month on that like mural so why should she have to go up and do all these repaintings because that's not how it works in the art world like that's not how it's supposed to be and so then we have the next scene which is scene two of Pacey and we're about to compare Dawson and Pacey so be prepared so Pacey is in the school cafeteria and he's talking to two guys in the line and they start talking and Pacey says oh if that's brown it must be Tuesday and <laughs> the student number one says what you call these things again, Witter? And Pacey says, elephant scrubs. Packed with the whole grain goodness. Did you guys see the look on Principal Green's face? And the student one says, huh? And Pacey says, I thought, you know, moral thing. I thought the guy was about to have a breakdown. And student two says, that girl Joey Potter, she told, or Joey, she totally lost it. Classic. And student one says, yeah. And Pacey says, look, uh, I'm running myself a little full here. Guess it was the crewman. Winner takes it. And you guys in? And student one says, how much? Pacey says, it was only a buck a pop. And student one says, had to be Carfield. And student two says, yeah, definitely. And Pacey says, what makes you so sure? And student one says, because there's no other possibility. And student two says, ha, ha, ha. And Pacey says, okay. Carfield it is. And he goes over to where Matt Garfield is sitting. And he goes, hey, Garfield. And Matt says, do I know you? And Pacey says, no, not really. Thankfully for me. Look, rumor has it you have a repressed urge to express your art artists. And, Pace, and Matt says, what, that thing yesterday at the mural? That was classic. Too bad I can't take credit for it. And Pacey says, so you didn't do it. And Matt says, I don't know. I mean, everyone seems to, seems to, so maybe I should be polite and accept the credit and say thank you. And Pacey says, maybe. But look, I'm here to tell you that not everyone thinks that you're so funny. Matt says, well, some people have a sense of humor. Is that your problem? Pacey says, yeah, that's me. I'm humorous. And Matt says, um, what, what do you want? And Pacey says, I want you to apologize, and I want you to turn yourself in, and I want you to do it before the day is done. And Matt says, and why would I do that? And Pacey says, because this time, you just happened to mess with someone that I care with, care about. <laughs> okay, so I have a lot of comparison for Dawson and Pacey. So first of all, Pacey is trying to figure out who did the, like, who destroyed the mural. Like, he's not over here, like, come to Joey. Like, you know as how he didn't come to Joey after P Dawson said not to? Like, he's out there trying to figure out who did it. Like, that's the thing that really gets me. Like, Pacey stepped into his loyalty of Immigrant 6. And I said, you know what? 
I'm gonna figure out who did this because whoever did this is gonna have to pay for it. And Dawson's over here being the immigrant number four that he is, like, oh, it's all gonna be okay. Just repaint it. And you notice how Pacey's not saying that at all? Like, he knows that whoever did this is gonna get it. And he says because you just happen to mess with something I care about, like, that right there. That right there shows it all. Like, he he really does care about Joey. And we know about that from the last episode. We know that from, like, the whole season three. But it's something where, like, he knows, like, whoever did this, they're gonna get it. So, then we have the next scene, which is scene three of Pacey. And remember how I said oh, whoever did this is gonna get it? So, they're outside school. And Pacey is watching Matt as he pulls into his... SUV. And when Matt gets out, he goes over to him. And Pacey says, that's a nice rag. And Matt says, it's a Christmas present. And Pacey says, huh, that sucks, huh? And Matt says, what's that? And Pacey says, your parents shorten on the off-road package. And he grabs Matt and throws him against the car. And Matt says, get your hands off of me. And Pacey says, oh, come on, tough guy. Matt says, what the hell do you want? And Pacey says, you know exactly what I want. And Matt says, so what's next, Twitter? You're going to sit your hair full of serpent dad on me? Can't you see? I'm barely shaking in, in my boots. And Pacey says, well, you know my name. That's a good starting place. And Matt says, but what I know is I'm going to count to three. And if you're... And you're going to step aside. And Pacey says, dream another dream, cowboy. That's not what this is going to shake out. Matt says, one, two, three. And Pacey does not release him. And he goes, are you whacked or something? And Pacey says, oh no, not yet. Not in a long shot. And Matt says, what? You want to you wanna say I did it? Okay, I did it. Huh? Satisfy? And Pacey says, good. Now, what are you, you going to do about it? Huh? And he's screaming. And he says, I said what you're going to do about it. And Matt says, I'm going to go and apologize, okay? And Matt and Pacey released him and allows Matt to walk away. And Matt says, oh. And Matt just, like, punches him. Like, right from the behind. And... Pacey gets up and like trims it over him and they're throwing and they throw each other until Pacey like slams Matt down on the ground and begins like beating him. And I just want to say like I laughed at this scene a little bit. Like I know that like, the first time I watched this I laughed so hard because Pacey like basically like gets on top of the car and like jumps over and it looks so funny to me. I'm like, go busy. And that all like goes down until Principal Green sees them and honks his car and he says, Hey, on your feet, both of you inside now. But I, I just love I mean I adore the fact that Pacey literally goes after Matt. Like he was like, You don't apologize, you're getting it. Like you are getting it, my friend. And so then we have the next scene which is scene four of Pacey. And he is inside Principal Green's office with Matt. And Principal Green goes, and he's talking, and he goes, Kim, get me Dawson Leary and David Crone, please. And Andy comes into the office, and she goes, uh, Principal Green, can I talk to you for a minute? And Pacey, and Principal Green goes, not now, Andy. I'm in the middle of stopping terrorists. My registration from a discipline violence. And, oh, sorry. And Principal Green says, what is it? And that's where Andy says, I like to dance my residation from discipline violence and comedy. And Principal Green says, what? Which I don't think it's not the right time. And Principal Green says, what? And Andy says, I think this was about me, and I'm not someone, I'm not someone who's unmoving, and I can't live up to. Principal Green, should we show, discuss this later, to, like, another thing? And so, he gets yelled at. <laughs> like, 
Chris the kids yell at her and he's like, why are you punching each other and da 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 So later, we have scene five of Pacey and they're back in the office and Dawson and David are in there too. And Principal Green says, now, since neither of Mr. Butter nor Mr. Cronfield choose to clarify on the meeting at their little tile fight in the parking lot, I'm going to count on your friends to look on your best interests. Mr. Ritter and Principal er, Pacey says, don't say anything, Dawson. And Pacey says, Mr. Green. And that says, not a word, Dave. And Principal Green says, well, someone better speak up and you better do it fast. Because on the time we call the D over at the dog minute, we'll trigger immediate review on your early diminished status. And Mr. Ritter, one more to finish suspension on your record and you've been down to kiss the whole higher education deal goodbye. Okay, I have no alternative. And Dawson says, it's because of the mural. And Pacey's like, hey, shut up. And Dawson, this is not your fight. And Dawson says, it's not yours either. Principal Green says, so that's what you're saying, that this, that Mr. Twitter picked a fight was because he believes that Mr. Confield had something to do with the validation of the unit mural. And Matt says, I went nowhere near that thing. As I could tell, I give a rep ask about the Chinese drawing. And Dawson says, if you didn't go anywhere near it, how'd you know what it was? Which, that's a very good question, Dawson. Probably the smartest thing he's at all all episode. The principal Green says that's a very good question. And Matt said, anyone could have taken a look. She's been working on that for weeks. And Dawson says, yeah, night after and before school. Other than that, it's sealed as tight as a drum. I'm one of her closest friends and I didn't see what it was. And Matt says, you know, this is ridiculous. And Dawson says, not to mention, if you didn't, I said, give a red ass, then why would you go all the trouble to finding out what it was? Pacey says, shut the fork, on my Confield, I think you just painted yourself into a corner. And that says, okay, you got me busted. Yeah, I, Jackson, for some meaningless mural. You know what? For one thing, it was ugly. You know, it was an eye chore, and not to mention, why would I look at some tragic girl's little message to the mess every morning? Frankly, it offends me. And Principal Green thought, possibly is to offend you. And Matt says, I'm white, I'm rich, that's all the possibility that I need. Okay, so first of all, I think that this is really, really stupid. I will say that. Because, yeah, it goes into what it was about, but Matt kind of like put himself in this hole, like Dawson said. Like, he's over here like, oh, this offends me, and la yada yada, but like, you really took that time and effort to destroy someone's mural because you don't like it? And Dawson was right, like, she she never let me see it, but like obviously Pacey was helping throughout the whole time. And Pacey knew how much it meant to Joey. And that's why he fought. Like he fought because he knew that yeah, this wasn't my fight, but Joey's not gonna do anything about it. So why should I allow her to sit there and pity and the depress over it? When, and it could like destroy her whole self esteem with this. And so I really like it because it kind of shows how much Pacey cares for her and how much Dawson cares about Joey too. And it just shows how much Joey is loved by these two people. So then we have scene three of Pacey and Joey. So, <laughs> Pacey, Pacey is. <laughs> Pacey's at Doug's apartment. I'm laughing because he has a steak on his eye, which I found very funny. And Doug comes in and grabs it, and Doug says, Do you mind? I'm having a steak for dinner with a nice brisky sauce. And Pacey says, Well, what am I having? And Doug says, Bread and water. <laughs> oh, that's always so fun for me. And, Doug, and Pacey says, Doug, I'm a soldier here, returning from the killing fields. I mean, you know, where's my purple heart and my Tinkery, tinkery tap parade. And Joey enters the, the apartment and she says, Watch on your black and white. You know, the one with the coat and the gingas and, and the fins on the shetty feed. 
And she says, where do you possibly go into pump gas for the rest of your natural born life, Pacey? Of, of uh, all beard moves? And Pacey says, what are you talking about? I was right. It was Matt Confield. And Joey says, yeah, that was, that was the one that left off your hooks, how? And Pacey says, because the guy deserves whatever he gets, okay? Brandon moves his spoon, silver spoon shove up his ass. And Joey says, oh, that's funny, Pacey. That's really funny. And Pacey says, oh, this is rich. Here I am trying to do something, the right thing. You know, sometimes a guy just can't win. And Joey says, no, he can't. Not if he's completely overreacts to the situation. If it, there was a way to your future, just go to your account, okay? And Pacey says, oh, hey, don't get me wrong. Don't do or don't, don't think that I ever cared here. I was only doing Dawson a favor. And Joey says, Dawson. And Pacey says, yes, Dawson. You know, looking out for you, think think back on me way back, you know, like the beginning of the school year, Dawson literally returns to the big big city, change man determined on with his, with his girl across the street. So he asked me to trust a friend. Trust a friend, la da 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 He had top and said, now trust a friend where he gets his head back into the player. And Joey looks hurt, and she says, so you guys traded me off like some baseball card. Is that what that was about? Pacey says, what? And Joey says, us. You and me. I thought, and Pacey looks at her like, you thought what? And Joey says, I guess I thought something else, Pacey. Oh, we all know what she thought. We all know what she thought. She obviously thought Pacey really loved her and like cared about her or liked her or whatever. And she was like, oh, Pacey really likes me, and that's what she's doing. But then Dawson, or Pacey, goes on and on about how Dawson told him to take care of her, and all this different kind of crap. But, but, but Pacey ruined the whole thing, like, you know, like, like, no, Pacey, Pacey messed up in the scene. <laughs> Which, he knows, he'll know this later, and he'll make up for it, but it always gets me whenever he's, and I she goes, I thought there was like an us. Like, that's basically what she was saying. And so then we have scene six of Pacey, where he's in principal with Green's office, and pa Matt and Pacey are there for her, for their punishment. And principal Christine Green says, You have a conscience filled over my authority, Mr. Conville. You have undetermined the ability of teachers to educate. And now you challenge my commitment to reshape this into a school and to community. And Matt says, Principal Green, it was only a mural. And Principal Green says, yes, it was only a mural. But it was a much more more than a mural. You can't, you don't fool me, Mr. Cronville. I, I know exactly who you are. You've been led to believe you were untouchable. So you disgraced the school. You disobey the rules. You serve to the student body with an on, with your, on, with the arrogant and your attitude. Now, you may be smart, you may be rich, Mr. Cronville, but you are not above the law. And you, for that reason, is my decision that you are expelled from Kate Side High. And Matt says, spelled? And Principal Green says, you heard me. And Matt says, for the rest of the year. And Principal Green says, for the rest of the year. And Matt says, Principal Green, do you have any idea how, what my father is going to say about this? And Principal Green says, yes, I have a good idea what your father is going to say about this. Which... Ooh, at least he got a spell. Like, that's a good thing. Uh, then we get to the next scene, which is scene four, Joey. And obviously, the, next, the last scene is going to come back to this scene. And so, Dawson is waiting for what punishment Pacey's going to get when Joey walks up to him. And Joey says, so what's going on there? And Dawson says, I don't know. It's hard to tell. And Joey says, no sign of reaching the cane or knuckles wrapping. And Joey says, or Dawson says no. And Joey says, let's face it, Pacey's going to get lucky if he goes without another suspension. But the way the things are, I mean, you you should have asked me to look out for him. And Dawson says, excuse me? And Joey says, I know about the whole wife switching arrangement. And Dawson says, wife? Joey, that's not what that, how, how I was. And you know, and you know it. Joey says, then how was it? And Dawson says, well, first of all, it was months ago. I mean, things are different between us. And Joey says, you're right. But I felt like you under 
understood me. And Dawson says, oh, and I don't know. And Joey says, no, I never asked for your pity. Dawson says, it wasn't, it wasn't my pity. I could have gone there for you, but I wanted to have someone you could turn in. Someone you could talk to. Now tell me, where is the harm in that? And Joey says, well, it would have been nice if you, if someone had, could have shared a, a general concern, Dawson. And Dawson says, that someone in the room right now? Because he got a hell of a lot more than he shared concern. Joey, why are you doing this? And Joey says, doing what? And Dawson says, casting aspects on people who obviously care about you. You really think that I don't want the best for you? Pacey, I mean, is a lot of things. Impulsive, thoughtless, some... The fact that he says thoughtless, like, oh, no, no, no. I just have to interrupt. Like, yeah, okay, I'm just going to continue. Stubborn, but everything of what happened this year, can you honestly doubt for a second that he doesn't care about you? Okay, I think that that's the best line that he says, but I don't think that he's thoughtless. I think sometimes he's thoughtless, but not really at the same time. It's kind of sad that Dawson thinks that of his best friend. And, okay, here's the thing that really gets me. Dawson asked this months ago. Like, obviously this happened months ago, because Dawson even says it. And basically what Dawson's kind of trying to say, like, like, I asked him to do that months ago. Like, do you really think that... Pacey would have took the time and effort to hang out with you and do all these different kind of things with you, like the B&B, &B, you know, all this different kind of stuff, and fight for you, and he's in that office, almost getting expelled for you. Like, do you really think, like, he would go through all that trouble if he does not care about you at all? And so, that's the thing that really kind of gets me. Like, there's, like, certain things that Pacey will do and Dawson doesn't get, but like another thing is the fact that like when when Pacey's getting expelled and Joey's like all mad about it, like oh like how could you how could you ask Pacey to do this for me and all this different kind of stuff, but really when you think about it, like Pacey was there for Joey the whole entire time, like he loved and cared about Joey, and it was pretty obvious. Uh, maybe not love's the right word, but kind of in the same sense. Like, if you punch a guy in the parking lot because you think he destroyed your friend's mural, like, that's that's pure love right there. Like, I don't know how else to say it. And if you m spend time with her, teach her how to drive, to, like, do the B&B, &B, like, spend time with her, hang out with her, talk to her, figure out everything, why... The, her quote-unquote soulmate is not doing any of this. Like, I'm sorry. The white fence is nothing compared to that. And he literally almost got it spelled in this episode for her. Like, and he, it goes back to, yeah, I think, when he says earlier, like, when he tells Joey, like, Dawson, I, I was doing Dawson a favor, but I think that was because he was like, he was trying not to say like, hey, I'm doing Nelson a favor, but I did this for you because I care about you. And he can, like, I, I kind of agree with Dawson. He was kind of like impulsive and stubborn. And I think that came in when you also have Joey, who is stubborn and sometimes a little bit thoughtless, not going to lie. And she's impulsive. Like, do you really think like, all those different kind of things are going to lead back to him not caring about you. Like, do you really think that? And I feel like one of the reasons why Pacey even said this was because he was like, I'm not going to get caught in my own actions. Like, I'm not going to tell her I like her like, like that. Like, he's just, I feel like it goes back to how they were raised. Like, Dawson was kind of raised with, with two great parents, kind of. And they loved him, and they care about him, and they support his every move that, they, that he makes. While we have Pacey and his parents. He, he literally got carried out of his house. He is dealing with all these different kind of things with his parents. There's not really, like, there's Do like Dawson's parents, but like we kind of don't see it very often. We see Doug, which that's an iffy relationship as it is. Gretchen's not in the picture right now. Like, not very, 
loved and supportive. And then we have Joey, who is loved and supported by Bessie and Bodie, but her parents aren't there. So really, when you think about it, like it was kind of hard for them to communicate on how much they care about each other, because it's hard. Like it's hard for them to say all these things. So for Dawson, it may be easy to say, "Yeah, I love you. And I care about you." But for someone who is struggling with their parents and all this different stuff, it kind of makes sense why Pacey and Joey don't really come out and say that kind of stuff. Like, they don't come out and say, hey, I'm so glad you're my friend. Like, that's a really awesome thing and a Pacey and Joey thing. So, then we have the next scene, which is scene seven of Pacey. And... Yeah. So, he comes outside the office, and Dawson is still waiting for Pacey. And Pacey, Pacey finally comes out and says, let me just state for the record, I like that man in there. In fact, I'll go one better. He is a great human being. He's got fairness of Lincoln, the charmness of Martin Luther King Jr. He's even handled in a temper, and I may say so myself, accurately suspended to a certain kind of Roosevelt's humor. And Tosin says, so he let you out. And Pacey says, not exactly, though. And Dawson says, but he didn't suspend you. And Pacey says, well... Just to say I'm not packing my bags quite yet, although three days out would have been a provided welcome decision. Dawson says to, okay, so DeRose, what happened in there? And Pacey says, I'm going to be a mentor. And Dawson says, be a what? And Pacey says, juvenile impulse. Principal Green seems to think that I would have benefit from a company and an example of someone on behalf of my age. And Dawson laughs at this, and he go. And Pacey's like, "What's so funny?" And Dawson says, "What about that poor kid? You're gonna start teaching him?" And Dawson, Pacey says, "What are you talking about, Dawson?" And Dawson says, "You're gonna teach him the importance of keeping a secret, like from you know Joey, for example." And Pacey says, "Oh, that uh, she told you." And Dawson says, "Yeah." And Pacey says, "Um." Well, so what do you think the odds are for you yourself while well, I'm then forgetting as a person as Principal Cream that was? Dawson says, not good, Pace. And Pacey says, okay. And Dawson says, not good. <laughs> which is kind of sad. Like, yeah, he messed up and he said like that, which I'm really bad at keeping secrets too. Like, when it comes to, like, if something makes me mad, I'll come out and say it. And I feel like that's how Pacey is and that's not how Dawson is. Like, but actually, in a sense, like, Dawson would probably do the same thing. So why is Dawson mad about this? And in the same sense, like, it's kind of sad that Dawson kind of laughs about him being a mentor. Like, we've seen, maybe we haven't yet. We haven't seen how Pacey is with kids. But, like, we've seen how he is with his people his own age when they, like, mess up. And he could be that big, big brother, like, sense and I feel like he does a good job which we'll see later so I can't go on to say anything about that but I feel like Dawson kind of laughs at him but like do you really do you really think it's a bad thing Dawson and this is kind of like a scene where we see how like unforgiving Dawson can be so then we have the next scene which is scene four of Pacey and Joey and the last scene so Pacey is putting on like a fresh paint of white paint and Joey comes up and she's carrying an art box and she's surprised to see him like and she goes what on earth and Pacey says hey Potter um and Joey says Pacey what are you doing and Pacey says painting and Joey says duh Pacey says I just thought it would be good if you could start in a blank canvas and Joey says blank canvas huh and Pacey says you know I, Celine, Saints, Joey to the Radish, Return to a Point A, all that good stuff. And Joey says, and who, might I ask, told you I was planning on repainting the mural in the first place? And Pacey says, uh, just this guy I met on the street, some guy, uh, your typical doer gooder. And Joey says, hmm. And Pacey says, so you gonna thank me? And Joey says, for what? And Pacey says, well, for the manner thing, you know, for defending your honor, buckling the system. And Joey says, timidly at the windmills while the, the thrones of mis, misguided hero complex. And Pacey says, well, yeah, that too. 
And Joey says, Pacey, if you're going to think, if I'm going to thank you for anything, it would be for being yourself. And you know, for not caring what anyone thinks and knowing in your heart what's right and wrong. For being there this year when I need you the most. And Pacey says, you're welcome. So you want to help? And Joey says, one condition. And Pacey says, sure, name it. Joey says, you gotta be honest. The only reason you're hanging out with me is simply because Dawson told you to. And Pacey says, yep, that's the only reason. And Joey says, hmm, you need to get a life. <laughs> and Pacey chuckles. Which, this is the end of this scene, like this whole episode. But it makes me laugh. Like, you know, like how I said earlier about how the parents aren't really there. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why Joey really never came out and said thank you. But I feel like, like, she thanks him for being himself, and she thanks him for being, like, a good friend. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why Pacey and Joey, like, match up so well. It's not the fact that, like, them two can't really handle each other or anything like that. Because when you really put them in the same room without Dawson, like, they can handle each other. I think one of the reasons why they had so much tension in season one and season two is because of Dawson. Like, that's what they fight about most of all. Like, they fight about Dawson. So when you put them, like, here, and you put them, like, this, like, it's not because of anything else. Like, she defends them. Like, he defends her. He loves, like, he cares about her. I keep saying love, but I don't really think that's the right word. And, like, they, like, he kind of, I don't really know if this is, like, apology or whatever, but he helps her. Like, he literally helps her paint the, repaint this mural. And without asking, may I add. Dawson, on the other hand, he just tells her to repaint it. Doesn't do anything else. He just tells her to repaint the mural. When Pacey does things without even being asked to do. And I feel like that's what makes Pacey so much better in this episode. Because... Instead of just standing around, waiting for everything else, and all of you that he this is him, like, kind of, like, defending her. Because he knows, that he knows that she, yeah, she can defend herself. Go on, rock on. But in another sense, like, he, he knew, like, this was his friend. He cared about her. He likes being around her. And this is a sense where he... Like, he even says this earlier, you mess with someone I care about. And he's going to deny it to Joey, obviously. Because of everything that's going on with his, like, life. Like, he doesn't really have the capability of, like, saying to someone, like, yeah, I care about you sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes he yeah, does have the capability of saying that. But I think it's more of his actions that speak louder than words. You know how, like, people say actions speak louder than words. I think that was the whole main thing with this episode like when you think about it it's not about like how they did this or how they like continue to show each other all this different kind of stuff it was the fact that Pacey just keeps showing his like how much he cares about her through actions through the, like coming up to her on that lake like maybe not because he cared about her but he cared about Dawson so therefore he's gonna do it then he like, it was the fact that, like, every time he struggles, like, he goes towards her. The, then he, like, does the B&B. Like, he continues to help her out throughout the whole process. He didn't suggest it. He did it. Like, he did it for the fact that, like, yeah, he says for the labor work. But really, he did it because he wants to help her out and hang out with her. And then he taught her how to drive. Like, yeah, he was being... Because he was being nice throughout the whole episode. But he was really trying to show that he cared about her and that he messed up. Then he fought for her defense. Like, as soon as someone messed with her, he was like, yeah, you mess with someone I love, you're gonna get it. And now he's painting over the mural instead of being like, hey, you just need to redo it. Like, he helps her out again. And obviously, without her asking... And I feel like that's one of the things that really gets me is the fact that like people are over here like, oh, that sounds better. I'm like, no, 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 no. If you really look into it, don't look in season four. Don't look at the problem episode in season four. Look at the season three, and really look at it. And then look, continue looking at season four before the problem episode, 
And then look at the after prom episode and like throughout season five, you can see how much he cares about her. Obviously, there are some episodes where they kind of did bad at the writing. And then look at season six. And then look at season one. And then look a little bit of season two. Like all those things, it's not about like how much like he comes up and defends her and da 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 da. It's the fact that he does things without even being told. He does things without really being asked and I feel like that was maturity too once Andy stepped into the picture. I feel like he starts doing those kind of things but when he realized how his feelings were with Jelly and how much he wanted to hang out with her and he was being told to hang out with her with Dawson, I feel like he needed that friend and Jelly needed that friend and that was when it started and then he had caught feelings. And when you really look at, at that aspect, when you really look at it through that mindset it's not the fact that Dawson told him to do it it was the fact that he did it without being told to do it and so when you go through this and Joey says that's the only reason why you hang out with me she knew that he was lying like she did that smile like he knew she knew she knew and so when we go through all all of this like it's in my conclusion that Pacey is the best Pacey's the best. Period. We all knew that. We all knew that because we have a whole podcast based off of this. And I think that's the main reasons why we love Pacey, especially the season three. And obviously, there's going to be more <laughs> reasons why. And all this stuff is going to come back next episode. So... If you like this episode, please make sure to subscribe on the YouTube channel, that's Jace's Creek Podcast, where I post every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's also other platforms that you can listen to, such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Make sure to review this podcast with kind words, please, only. Make sure you comment, subscribe, share, whatever you need to do, and also you can catch every episode again on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I would love to hear your thoughts on Instagram, that's Winter and Potter, and my TikTok is Pacey and Joey. I hope to see you guys again Friday and Saturday and Sunday. I love hearing your guys' thoughts, so please, 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 please make sure to comment down below. Bye, guys.